I would like to show you five tips that I find extremely useful in my workflow. First one is edge slide with clamp. So let's duplicate this object to show you how it works. So if we go into edit mode, let's delete this face. If we extrude this edge now, E for extrude, Z, and now let's move it along. And let's say we want to slide this edge. We know we can slide it this way fairly easy, but did you know you can also slide it this way, which maintains the exact direction with the edge slide tool. If we drag this, we move it only in that direction. If you see the history of the tool, there's an option to clamp. If we uncheck that, nothing happens. I think it's some kind of bug, but it cannot be set. Also, in the tools properties, there's nothing that tells us that we can clamp. However, if you click and drag and press C, now we have unlocked this hidden fantastic tool, which allows us to move up is as opposed to just down. And the same tool is available from your right click context menu. If you go and click on edge slide and you start dragging it, if you press C, now clamp is turned off so we can slide as much as we want. Is that useful for other usages? Well, you'll find out in a second once we go through this third one, which is extrude along normals and solidify. The next tip is something that's a little bit more common. You might be aware of it, but I think it's still fantastic to show you how easy it is to do it. So if we duplicate this object and we want to move this face along the exact edge at which it is aligned, if we go into edit mode, click on that face and change here from transformation orientation from global to normal with the gizmo enabled. So you can go to move and now we can perfectly move and align along that edge. So in a way that's an edge slide, but with a face, as long as that face is perfectly aligned to the direction that we want to go. You might forget that you're going from normal to global and lose your bearing sometimes. So there is another tip later down, which will show you how we can do this without the normal transformation. But let's jump now to the next one, which is extrude along normals versus solidify. If we take this first object that we have here and put it somewhere over here, and we probably are very well aware of the solidify modifier. If you're not, you definitely should because it's the easiest thing to do. Basically, we add a solidify modifier and we can supply a thickness and change the direction. And we can create an even thickness. There's various modes that are more complex, but this is the gist of it. We can also do the same thing in edit mode. So if we go into edit mode and you hold down on extrude button and you go to extrude along normals, select your faces and now we can move up. There's the option to offset even, which we can do post, or there's also the option in the tool settings to offset even, and we can specify a very specific distance. Now that might be useful in some cases when you know you definitely need to solidify everything fairly evenly as it saves a few clicks then going to solidify and then applying that and then going back into object mode. The next one, this is a fairly new thing that came out of Google Summer of Code last year or the year before that, which is knife to axis lock. Let's duplicate this element here. And now let's go into edit mode and we're going to click the knife tool and we can start cutting. So click on somewhere. And what if we want to lock an axis? So before, this tool only worked with the axes that were based on the 3D view that we were in. In other words, if we press on Z, that Z aligns only to the 3D view. Whereas now if you press Z, it locks on the global Z axis, which is of course the only useful thing you would want to do. And we can do the same. So now I'm going to press enter. Let's continue by cutting along the X. So I'm in the knife tool now. So if I press X, it locks in the X axis. Press enter. Let's do another cut from here. Press Z and enter. So we have these perfect cuts that are completely aligned to our axes. So it's a very useful thing in case you need to modify your geometry a little bit further, because after we have cut this, we could very easily start to modify this geometry with the extrude region tool. So if we select all of these elements, we extrude one with the select one, we extrude, deselect, extrude, deselect, extrude. And you can see how quickly that works just with the knife tool and understanding exactly how we want to cut your mesh. And the last tool that I want to talk to you about is shrink and fatten. 
that's a tool that the friend that uses 3ds max only made me aware that it actually exists in blender as well so how does it work so let's duplicate this object here go into edit mode and if we scroll down in the toolbar you might need to scroll if you don't see it and it's this tool here called shrink fatten so let's select everything and with the tool enabled let's click on offset even and with the tool enable we either shrink or we fatten and of course we can change the radius afterwards however it's not perfect what do i mean by that if we go into object mode and drag this we notice that it's done things that weren't quite the same in the original mass because these edges didn't quite align. So it's something to be aware of, but if you sometimes need to expand everything or contract it, it's a very nice tool to use. We can even try it with these examples here. So I'm going to duplicate this element that we did here, go into edit mode, select everything, go to this shrink fatten tool, and now let's give it a shot. And you see it doesn't work that well in this case, but it is also extremely useful in different ways. So we can click on this face right here. And remember how I told you back when we were doing these normal transformations that there's another way to do it without going into normal here. And that is again with the shrink fatten tool. If we select this face, we can basically drag it forwards or backwards. And we can do that to any face. We can drag these two faces and they drag as well. Of course, this mesh is already a bit tricky. So let's start with something that's a little bit tidier. If we duplicate this item here, now let's select these two faces and they should move pretty neatly forwards and backwards. It's another tool that's very useful if you need to move a lot of faces along their normals. Again, it's not perfect. But in many instances, I think it would work rather well. And it can also save you a few clicks so you don't need to go to normal transformations and then forget that you're even in that. Those are the five tips for today. Let me know what you think about them and if you'd like to see more tips like this for Blender. Make sure you click the like button, it helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you'd like to see more content about Blender. Now, thank you to all my Patreons for your support for making these videos happen. You can become my patron and support the content on this channel, including getting some of the files. Clearly this is a simple one, but some are a bit more advanced, so they might be very useful to actually have a hold of. Thank you very much and see you next time.